Hi guys! Welcome sa Engineered Math Channel. Sa video na to ay magsasagot tayo ng math challenge questions. So kung gusto niyo itong matutunan, just keep on watching. Okay, so magsasagot tayo ngayon ng math challenge questions for Grade 7. And this will be the part 1 for Grade 7 Math Challenge Questions sa series of videos ko. So, pwede natin itong magamit kapag nagpre-prepare or nagre-review tayo for our upcoming math contest like MTAP, etc. So, magsasagot tayo ng sets of questions. So, let's start with question number 1. If each interior angle of a regular polygon measures 135 degrees, how many sides does the polygon have? So, meron lang tayong direct formula na gagamitin dito. So, yung Formula na yun ay yung interior angle ng regular polygon, so take note of the word regular, is equal to 180 times n minus 2 divided by n. Okay, so ito kasing 180 times n minus 2, siya yung formula for sum of interior angles. Since dahil regular polygon naman tayo, pag divide natin itong sum of interior angles sa number of sides na n, makukuha natin yung measure ng each interior angle. So, therefore, substitute natin yung given. Sabi yung each interior angle ng regular polygon is 135, right? And then, equal siya sa 180 times n minus 2 over n. So, solve natin itong equation for n. So, cross-multiply ko dito si n, magiging 135n is equal to 180 times n minus 2. Then, we have 135n is equal to distribute 180n minus 360. Transpose ko si 360 sa kabila, and then si 135n sa kabila, magiging 360 is equal to 180n minus 135n. So, we have 360 is equal to 180n minus 135n is 45n. Okay? And then, divide both sides by 45. Masasolve natin si n as 360 divided by 45 is simply 8. So, therefore, the number of sides is 8. Okay? Next, we have, 6 years ago, James and Peter's ages were in the ratio 3 is to 2. Now, their ages are in the ratio 4 is to 3. How old is each of them now? Okay, so age problem. So, dun muna tayo sa age nila 6 years ago. So, sabi, yung ages daw nila 6 years ago is in the ratio 3 is to 2. So, therefore, pwede nating mahanap yung actual age nila 6 years ago by multiplying a certain factor, let's say, unknown variable x. So, 3x for James and 2x for Peter. Now, mahanap natin yung age nila at the present time kapag nag-add tayo ng 6. Kasi, di ba ito yung age daw nila 3, 6 years ago? So, Yung present age value nila, makukuha natin pag nag-add tayo ng plus 6 dito sa age nila na 6 years ago. So, 3x plus 6, and then 2x plus 6. Okay, then punta tayo sa next sentence. Now, sabi, their ages are in the ratio 4 is to 3. So, ngayon daw, yung present age nila, ito yung representation natin, di ba? Nasa ratio naman daw na 4 is to 3. So, therefore, pwede tayong makabuo ng equation by... Having 3x plus 6 divided by 2x plus 6, yung ratio ng age nila dapat equal dito sa 4 is to 3 or 4 thirds. So, therefore, ito yung key equation natin. Solve natin for x. Cross multiply na lang natin. We have 3x plus 6 times 3 is equal to 4 times 2x plus 6. Distribute, we have 3x times 3 is 9x plus 6 times 3 is 18 equals, distribute then, 4 times 2x is 8x, plus 4 times 6 is 24. Then, transpose the 8x dito, transpose the 18 dito, we have 9x minus 8x is equal to 24 minus 18. So, therefore, 9 minus 8x is x, equals 24 minus 18 is 6. So, therefore, x is 6. So, masasolve na natin yung current age nila by substituting 6 dito sa representation natin. So, therefore, si games ay 3 times Yung x natin na 6 plus 6, we have 3 times 6 is 18 plus 6. So, 18 plus 6 is 24. So, therefore, James is 24 years old. Tapos si Peter, 2 times x is 6 plus 6. We have 2 times 
6 is 12 plus 6 is 18. So, therefore, si Peter naman ay 18. Okay, so therefore, the answer is 24 and 18 years old. Okay? Next, we have, solve the inequality absolute value of 2x plus 5 minus quantity x plus 3 is less than or equal to 1. Okay, so, inequality involving absolute value. So, transpose muna natin itong quantity na to sa right side. So, parang absolute value of 2x plus 5 magiging less than or equal to 1. etong whole quantity, di ba negative siya, magiging positive siya dito. Okay? And then, simplify natin. So, absolute value of 2x plus 5 is less than or equal to 1 plus 3 is 4, tapos copy si x. So, x plus 4. So, meron tayong property na absolute value of x is less than or equal to a is equal to negative a is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to a. So, therefore, meron tayong dalawang case. So, dito muna tayo sa case na to. So, parang itong quantity na to, siya yung a. So, negative x plus 4 is less than or equal to itong absolute value natin na x this time, itong quantity na 2x plus 5. So, solve natin itong inequality na to. So, Distribute ko tong negative. Negative x minus 4 is less than or equal to 2x plus 5. So, we have, transpose ko dito si negative x, tapos si 5 dito magiging negative 4 minus 5 is less than or equal to 2x plus x. So, negative 9 is less than or equal to 3x. Divide both sides by 3. We have negative 3 is less than or equal to x. Okay, so ito yung isang solution or x is greater than or equal to negative 3. Okay? Now, dito naman, sa isa, ito naman yung x is less than or equal to a. So, this time, itong quantity na to, yung 2x plus 5, is less than or equal to, dito naman, as is lang na x plus 4. Then, solve natin for x. So, transpose ko si x dito, transpose ko si 5 dito, magiging 2x minus x is less than or equal to 4 minus 5. So, we have 2x minus x is x, less than or equal to 4 minus 5 is negative 1. So, therefore, ito yung dalawang solution natin. So, sa number line, pag pinlat natin to, hanapin natin yung intersection nila. So, let's say 0, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So, itong x is greater than or equal to negative 3. So, dito siya, di ba? Pag ganun. Tapos, yung x is less than or equal to negative 1, pag ganun naman yung direction niya. So, ano intersection nila? Ito. So, therefore, in between negative 3 and negative 1 yung solution. Or in interval notation, we have negative 3, comma, negative 1. Okay? Next, we have factor completely x to the 4th plus 4y to the 4th. Okay, so, ang technique na gagamitin natin dito ay mag add at mag tayo ng same term para ma-balance in such a way na itong x to the 4th plus 4y to the 4th ay magiging perfect trinomial square. So, anong magiging middle term para maging perfect trinomial square itong x to the 4th plus 4y to the 4th? So, mag add tayo ng ano? 4x squared y squared, right? So, para maging perfect trinomial square siya. So, dahil nag-add tayo ng 4x squared y squared para balance, pag ma-minus tayo ng 4x squared y squared din. Okay? Then, saka na natin i-factor out using factoring perfect trinomial square. So, we have x squared plus 2y squared quantity squared. Right? Kasi pag finol natin to, ito yung magiging sagot. Okay? Minus 4x squared y squared. And then, itong 4x squared y squared, pwede natin gawing ano to? 2xy quantity squared, right? Law of exponent, pag nindistribute nyo, equal lang din dito. So, therefore, meron tayong x squared plus 2y squared quantity squared minus 2xy quantity squared. Meron tayong difference of 2 squared. So, yung formula nun is x squared minus y squared is equal to x plus y, x minus y, right? So, pwede natin apply yun dito. So, we have... Ito parang yung x natin, tapos ito yung parang y natin. So, x squared plus 2y squared plus 2xy times x squared plus 2y squared minus 2xy. Okay? So, rearrange ko na lang. I think ito na yung final answer is x squared plus 2xy plus 2y squared 
times x squared minus 2xy plus 2y squared. Okay, so this is the factored form of our expression. Okay? Next, we have a square is inscribed in a circle and its diagonal is 16 cm. Find the area of the region between the circle and the square. Okay, so drawing natin. So, meron daw tayong circle. Tapos sa loob ng circle ay may naka-inscribe tayo na square. Okay? So, let's say ito yung center ng circle. Tapos yung diagonal daw ng square. So, let's say ito yung diagonal niya. Ang measurement niya ay 16. Okay, so, kapag nag-inscribe tayo ng, ng square sa isang circle, yung diagonal ng square ay magiging diameter ng circle. So, therefore, kung yung diagonal natin ay 16, yun yung diameter ng circle natin. At yung radius ng circle bale ay kalahate ng diameter na 16, which is 1 half ng 16 is 8. Okay, so, mahanap natin yung area ngayon nitong circle. As well as, pwede natin mahanap yung area noong square using Pythagorean theorem. So, given diagonal, parang ito ay right triangle, right? Let's say x yung side nung square. So, parang Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus x squared is equal to 16 squared. Itong triangle na to. So, we have 2x squared is equal to 16 squared. So, x squared is equal to, divide both sides by 2, we have x squared is equal to 16 squared divided by 2 is what? 16 squared is 256. Tapos divide 2 pa natin, we have x squared is 128. So, x is equal to square root of 128. So, therefore, makukuha na natin yung area nung square. Pero yung hinahanap sa problem ay yung area nung region between the circle and the square. So, parang ito yun, di ba? Para mahanap natin to, subtract natin yung area nung circle doon sa area ng square. So, we have area is equal to area ng circle minus area ng square. So, we have area for square is pi r squared, right? Minus area for circle is s squared. So, we have pi. Yung r na nakuha natin ay 8. So, pi times 8 square minus yung x natin or yung side ng square is square root of 128. 128 square root. Tapos, square pa natin. So, we have pi times 8 square or 64 pi minus square root of 128 squared. Is mawawala na yung square root kasi makakancel niya, magiging 128. So therefore, this is our final answer. 64 pi minus 128. Or kung gagamitin natin 3.14 yung pi, we have 64 times 3.14 minus 128. We have 64 times 3.14 is... 200.96 and then minus 128 we have 72.96 okay the unit is square centimeter okay so tutulan ko muna dito yung grade 7 math challenge questions part 1 natin so, so abangan nyo lang yung future upload ko for okay. more grade 7 math challenge questions okay so that's it for this video so, sana ay may natutunan kayo sa video na to at maraming salamat sa panunood.